Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Cabin Crafts and welcome to my kitchen. I decided to do this um, video at home so to give you a little different background. So behind me is my redware cabinet. This is in my kitchen and I've had it for over 20 years and I wanted it really bad and I couldn't afford it. And so the shop that I got it from, I asked her if I could trade her game boards for this pie safe and she agreed and so I literally got this cabinet with game boards I had to make a lot of game boards but anyway I've had it for probably about 25 years and I've loved it ever since so I wanted to give you all a different background we're in my kitchen I've got my glass of sweet tea ready to go and a lot of you asked me to do um, a video on the language of flowers and so I ordered these books they're going to be available on the website uh, sometime this week and so this is the language and sentiment of flowers now this one is a Victorian book but artificial flowers go way back they go into the uh, 18th century for sure ladies that had the big beautiful flat brim straw hats in the 1800s would have artificial flowers on their pretty hats um, they might even be embellishments on their clothing, on their dresses, and they were made with really stiff cotton, starched cotton, paper, silk. Uh, I, I read somewhere that they had um, all these different materials they were making these artificial flowers with, and they look real. If you look up Diderot's encyclopedia, Diderot was a Frenchman who did an 18th century encyclopedia on absolutely everything in the 18th century. If you want to know something about how things were made in the 18th century, go to Diderot's encyclopedia. It's spelled D-I-D-E-R-T. No, D-I-D-E-R-O-T. The T is silent. It's Diderot. And he had an encyclopedia about everything under the sun. So today we're going to talk about the language of flowers. And since we did some other uh, wool felt things, I thought it would be kind of cute since we're getting close to Easter. Today is Sunday. This probably won't appear uh, Sunday, but um, I thought it would be neat for, like for little girls, you could make some uh, felt flowers. You're going to have some leftover felt from your other projects maybe. So here are some felt flowers. These are very, very simple to make. All you will need is some felt and a hot glue gun. I actually really hate these, but you know, this one's necessary. Uh, a pair of scissors. I've got some uh, wrapped stems here, wire stems. It's been wrapped. Actually, they're kind of too thin. I doubled, I doubled the wire for this one because it was too flimsy. But if you want to make a, some for a vase, you would need the wires. Here are some uh, pin backs. So like you would glue these to the back of the flower and it could be a brooch or these are hair breadths. You could glue it to a hair bread. A little girl could clip it in her hair. Or uh, my daughter-in-law a few years ago uh, when she got married she asked me to help her make felt flowers for the flower girl's uh, little headband and so and, I'll, and to decorate the basket. So you can get a headband and, and put these on there for Easter or their Easter bonnet or put it on a basket. The, the possibilities, as I always say, are endless. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make three different flowers. We have, this is a rose. This is, this is a mom. This is my favorite. This is one of my favorite flowers. And of course we have like a daisy. So I'm gonna show you how to make these three flowers. But I just thought it was interesting. Um, I'm gonna read a few of the uh, sentiments in here um how many of you all ever watched the older little rascals movie uh, with alfalfa and darla and he says that famous line dear darla i hate your stinking guts you are scum between my toes so in the early days and this goes back even to greek and roman times flowers and herbs um, even thistles and thorns and things, they had a meaning and a sentiment. And so if you look up, let's see, hate. Hatred. You would give someone basil. Now that's an herb, but, you know, 
Instead of giving uh, Darla a rose, he could have just handed her a handful of basil. That would have been funny. She wouldn't have known what he was doing. But anyway, people back in the day would send um, a bouquet of flowers, and each flower meant something, and it usually was something about that person. Purity, innocence, beauty. Um, roses have so many different colors, and each rose color has a different meaning. Uh, let me find another another one here that's pretty interesting a white rose means i am worthy of you a peach blossom so even fruit blossoms i am your captive uh let's see i shall not survive you black mulberry tree Ooh. or immortality was a globe amaranth um let's see Impatient of absence, like if you're impatient for someone to come back, your love to come back. Com uh, Corcoris, whatever that is. Some of these I've never, <laughs> never even heard of before. Uh, love at first sight. Coriopsis, Arkansa. Okay. So anyway, you get the message. So. The language of flowers, and Shakespeare used the language of flowers a lot in his um, sonnets and plays. You know, a rose by any other name would smell just as sweet. That's a famous line from uh, Romeo and Juliet. So anyway, this is a really, a really cool little book. Uh, people would send flowers according to uh, that person's attributes, what they liked about them or what they didn't like about them, obviously. And Princess Catherine actually kind of has brought this back to the forefront um, when she got married to Prince William because she picked flowers that actually had meanings and then they printed that that you know in all of the newspapers and everything that this is what the flowers meant in Princess Catherine's uh, bridal bouquet. So that's actually a really good time to um, make a pretty bouquet is on your wedding day and you want to put specific flowers in there that mean something to you and your groom. So this is a really neat little book. And since it's Sunday I have something else. I have my big giant Patriot Bible here. And the thing that I keep hearing a lot of is the key word I think for 2023 and probably since 2020 is anxiety. Everyone has anxiety. And people will even say in my comments on my videos, I had, I've, I've had anxiety, I've had depression. Um, people are worried, and I talked about this in another video. You know, you have earthquakes, and we have spy balloons, and we have the threat of nuclear war, and EMPs, and all this sort of thing. And so Jesus said to his disciples, um, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. And I will skip down to where he talks about a flower. And he says, And which of you by worrying can add one cubit to your stature? If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? So Jesus talks about anxiety. Consider the lilies, how they grow. So we're talking about flowers again. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He's talking about the, the lilies. Well, Jesus is even called flower names in the Bible. He's the lily of the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. And I'm going to skip over to my husband's favorite verse. So this one specifically talks about anxiety. This is Philippians chapter 4. And it is uh, verse 6 and all the way through um, verse 8. So be anxious for nothing. Now I'm going to stop a minute and say, when I say these things to you, I'm saying it right back to me because I'm just like everybody else. I get anxious and I have anxiety. So I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to myself as well. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, now this is my husband's favorite part. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, 
whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. How many know we get a lot of bad reports on TV? If there is any virtue or if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So that's just a quick little devotional of tying in flowers and, and what uh, Jesus said about being anxious. And that's, what the, that's where we are today. We're, we're anxious. We're worried. Um, we can't add anything to our height by worrying. It doesn't make us grow. In fact, it actually makes us stunt our growth spiritually. So try, and I will try to, Whatever things are pure, true, lovely, of good report, think on these things. So in other words, um, turn off the TV. Now don't turn off YouTube because I'm on there. But watch good things. Watch pure things. Watch nice things. Watch things that make you smile and make you happy. And like I said in another video, when your hands are engaged, your mind is not. You're not thinking about all of these bad things. And crafting is a great way to uh, take your mind off of all of these bad things. And especially if you make it for someone else, not even for yourself. Make this as a gift for someone. I love to give gifts. I love to give things away. In fact, I think probably half the things in my store get given away more than they are sold. So we're gonna make some of these flowers today. And I'm gonna show you how to make specifically these three. And I know there's probably other videos on YouTube that you can watch about these, but um, I'm gonna talk about the centers so I made these three flowers. Let's start with, with the little white daisy here. So I have just a strip of yellow wool felt. And I've already started, you can see I've started fringe cutting that. And I'm just going to finish that all the rest of the way. And again, no patterns. You just, you just do it. And everybody knows flowers are all different sizes. They, some can be large, some can be small. The thing is, I feel like Mr. Rogers now. It's your flower. And it's special because you made it. So I'm all the way at the end, and this is gonna be this is gonna be the center of our little of our little daisy here. So I'm gonna just put a Get out the uh, handy dandy glue gun. I'm just gonna put a little dot right there to get it started. Fold it over on itself. And, and you notice I didn't cut, of course you don't cut all the way through or you won't be able to uh, roll your, your felt. And the, this is what I hate about glue guns is all these crazy strings. But just do a little section at a time. This is a low melt glue gun because I, I burn myself. I'm hazardous with hot things and sharp things. So I'm just going to keep going. A little couple inches at a time. And you just keep rolling and you put your glue down there on the bottom where I didn't cut. And you just roll it up. A little more to go. And just roll. And these go very fast. You'll see that when you start making them. You, you can make a lot of these in a short amount of time. And like I said, this is a great project for uh, your Easter bonnets, your little girls' Easter hats. Um, I love it when the older ladies that, that go to church uh, and they dress up for Easter and they wear the hats and they wear their pretty brooches and that. Wouldn't that be a cute, wouldn't that be a cute pin on somebody's outfit? So here's the center of our daisy. So we have that. And then I took a piece of white felt and I started, I started clipping that. You can see I just clipped triangles and again, I didn't go all the way through. So I'm just gonna finish clipping triangles. And you'll have scraps left over like that. You just pull them out. And it doesn't have to be perfect goes really fast and we'll just finish this one and I had a really good time when my daughter-in-law uh, asked me to do this for the for the bright you know the flower little flower girls I thought that was a really good idea but I'm thinking about Easter and right now I'm in we're in Missouri and it's February 
and our Easter lilies are already blossoming because it's been so warm around here. So now I'm going to take my, my little center, my cute little center, and I'm going to put a little tab of glue, the little dot of glue right there, just so we can stick it on. There we go. It's stuck on. And you're going to do the, the same thing. You're just going to do a little bit at a time, a couple inches. I'm left-handed, and so that makes things really awkward for me, and my glue gun has not got a long enough cord. So I'm rolling and gluing. Maybe that's better, and hopefully you can see. And I'm rolling and gluing. This one's almost done. There we go. And that's what the bottom looks like. And you can just take a, a little round circle of, of your scrap felt. So now, when we open this out, look at that. I don't know why my nose keeps itching so much today, because I'm on camera. And you can just kind of spread them out. Now wouldn't that be pretty on on even a coat in the in the winter time you could make wool felt flowers for to wear on the lapel of your coat. I have one. So there's that flower. There's that one. And like I said, if you wanted to, you can put a little circle on the bottom and glue that to a let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just glue this to a little, uh, this is one of those little alligator clips, like little girls, for you to put in their hair. And if you're not, if you're not sure it would be secure enough, you can um, take a needle and thread and, and kind of sew it around there too, just to make sure it is secure. And I'm just going to run a dip of, drip of little glue there and glue it on. And you can stick it in in their hair. There. Put it in their hair. So there's that one. And then like I said, I also have pin backs so you could make a brooch. So there's our little daisy. The next one is a mum. And this is my favorite one to make because they're just so fluffy. And I love, mums are one of my favorite colors. I'm going to make a dark pink mum. And so this is going to be really easy. Now, this is not the wool felt that I, I'm going to sell in the store. This, this is this acrylic felt you get at the craft shop that's like, you know, up to 30 some odd cents. It's not real expensive. So we're just going to cut probably about a two or three inch strip. And you always want to cut down the long side because you want to have enough, you want to have a really full flower. So there's our strip. And then I'm going to run some hot glue, looks like I might need another stick, along the bottom. And I'm going to fold this over in half. And again, you don't want to burn yourself. So we're folding it in half. There we go. So now we have, we have a tube. We have a tube of felt. And now you're just going to cut fringe. Very quickly. Probably should have had one of these started to save time, but it goes pretty fast. And I'll try and talk while we're while we're doing this. But um, again, back to uh, the 18th century, which are, is our favorite time period that we like to talk about. So ladies would wear those big, beautiful flat brim straw hats, 
or they would have a bonnet and on some of their dresses they even had artificial flowers and you all if you're old enough to remember who Marie Osmond is remember she had that song back in the 70s paper roses so people have made yeah and so I'll tell you what I've seen some paper flowers that are made nowadays that you would not know were not real they are so authentic looking so we're almost to the edge and my, my scissors can feel where that glue line is so I'm just stopping at the glue line there we go so we cut we didn't cut the open end where I glued we cut that tube in pardon my nose I don't know what what's going on so I'm gonna put a little dot of glue right there again just to secure it fold it over on itself And then we're just going to glue and roll. And this is really a quick craft. Like I said, this, this doesn't take any time at all. This would be really fun to do with your kids. So for those of you who like to do crafts with your kids, and I know there's a lot of them out there, you could make some felt flowers, give them to grandma, for Mother's Day, wouldn't that be cute? Give a little bouquet of, of, the, of flowers that the kids made and they won't die. That's something that they'll always look at. I need another glue stick. And remember, it was extra special because the kids made it. So we're just going to finish rolling that up. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? I love hot pink and I love turquoise. How pretty would it be to have like a whole bunch of different colors of these? So there's the moms. So we have our little daisy. We have moms. Out of the green felt, I just cut some leaves and you know, you can just glue those onto the bottom too. You have a little, a cute little leaf on there. So the next one we're going to do, this one's probably the most uh, complicated, but yet not complicated of the two. And this is a rose. And so what you do with this, I know you probably can't see that, but it's like all these different little scallops. So you cut a a circle of felt. Let's do let's do red. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a spiral into this little um, rose. I need some more red. So I'm going to do a center. I shouldn't have thrown this away over here. I just need a scrap. There we go. So you go. You're going to want to kind of skim the outside edge and get that flat circle off of there so just very very close to the edge cut these little scallops right along the very edge and I'm going right along the edge all the way around and again I did not use a pattern for this if you want you know to make a big rose you can. It just depends on the size circle you cut. So there's the beginning of our circle. Now I'm going to go into one of these scallops and I'm going to keep scalloping with my scissors until I get all the way to the center. And I hope you all can see this. kind of like an apple peel. My husband always says that when he was a little boy his grandfather could peel an apple all the way around and then we just go in the middle of that. So that's what you have. 
and it's all scallopy. So we're just going to take, we're going to start in the middle, we're not on the end where we, where we started, we're going to start in the middle where we stopped cutting. And I'm just going to overlap that really tight. I'm just going to put a little piece of glue on that bottom there. Just a little dot. In my glue gun. There we go. Just to secure that right real tight in the middle. So you can see I've got the start of a little rosebud. And now, all you got to do is again, a couple of inches at a time, just start winding that around. Of course, I got my fingers in the hot glue. I'm trying to do it where you can see. I hate that stuff. But anyway, he said his grandfather could peel an apple all the way around without the peel breaking in one piece. He could make one piece. And as I'm, as I'm uh, going around, I'm kind of bringing that up. I'm not going, I'm not staying level with the, so, so it looks like the rose is building up the sides. See that, how it's kind of funneling? I'll just get this done. And then I'm going to make a really tight little rosebud in the middle with a piece of scrap felt. Because it's just not rosy looking enough to me this way. I'm kind of getting it built up the sides. Now, another way to do a rose is to cut a bunch of individual petals and just keep gluing them around and around and around. But that's really time consuming. And if you're doing this with some kids, they're going to get tired of that really fast. Just like some of you out there who uh, don't like long videos. If you don't like long videos, bye. <laughs> because I do long videos. I don't know how to be... I'm long-winded. All right, so there's this is this one is a little bit bigger than this one, so I'm gonna take again these silly strings. I'm gonna take a just a scrap piece of one of the ends here, make a rectangle, fold it in half, and I'm just gonna cut cut those open ends. So we've made an oval. I'm going to fold that into like a to like an S shape. Just put a little glue in there to hold it. Make like an S shape. Don't need to see that. And then another little dot of glue and I can roll. <sighs> Hate this stuff. Now, in the 18th century, they would have sewn this. So I'm just going to roll this up tight. And you see, I have a rosebud. And if you want to make it a little more, you can. You can. I don't want to stay. I need another piece of glue there. Now hold that one second. I'm going to open that out a little bit. And then I'm just going to put some glue on the bottom of my little spirals. And stick that down in the middle. And you have, you have a red rose. And then I was digging around in some of my craft stuff. And I found like these little glass beads. And those would look like little drops of dew. Probably this is too uh, too tiny. Put trying to put. Uh, I'm gonna burn myself. I know, but maybe just a drop of a little a little a uh, few drops of these glass beads. It'll look like dew drops on there. 
I think that's kind of cute. Stick them on there. Always want to do stuff like this in odd numbers because even numbers, it just don't look right. We'll do three. There's a few dew drops on there. So if you want, you can kind of trim up the bottom. Make it even so that you can uh, glue a little circle on there and put it on whatever kind of back you want. And then here's another uh, idea for a center of a flower. Um, if you wanted to make a sunflower, you could make kind of do this same technique, but make big rounded petals. And of course, this part would be yellow. And then all you'd have to do is you can make a rolled center. And this isn't cut at all. This is just this is just going to be a rolled strip, and it makes a nice flower center too. And just stick that in the middle of your flower. You can make up your own flower. I'm sure there's flowers out there that we've never seen before in our lives. Nobody has to know. You can make your own flower. Come up with your own flower design. So you could put just that little rolled up center in there and you could put a bunch of of the little uh, glass beads on there. I'm going to try that. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to put a bunch of glue on the top and pour some glass beads on them and just mash them in there. Isn't that pretty? So if you wanted to make a, a sunflower, you could do the yellow leaves, you could do brown, the brown rolled center, and of course the sunflower head's pretty big, so this would need to be a lot bigger. And then just glue a bunch of brown glass beads in there. It looked like the little seeds. That would make a pretty little flower. But there you go. Again, possibilities are endless. So that's our quick little uh, flower tutorial. Wasn't so quick because I did other things in there. But uh, you get the idea. And um, thank you for joining me in my kitchen and, and for watching the video. And I hope you make some of these. And when you make stuff, people are sending me pictures. Please send me pictures. I enjoy seeing the things you're making. And I'm absolutely blown away by your creativity. And you all say, I've never done this before, and it, and it looks great, and it's, it's, I love seeing that. So share your pictures with me. I'd love to see it. And um, remember, don't be anxious. At least try not to, and I will try not to, too. Thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye.